Well, you know, the reason I've dedicated my professional life to being the director of the American Institute for Pyramid Research is because I think especially the pyramids in Giza, certainly in the rest of the world too, but the pyramids in Giza and Egypt carry tremendous secrets that were placed there, which if not searched for, won't be found. So let's look at some research I did on the Bent Pyramid and some connections to Giza. Okay, now the Bent Pyramid was built by Sneferu, who put together more stones in building construction projects than any other person in the history of the world, even his son Khufu, who built the Great Pyramid. Quite a family of builders with stone. So was this a mistake? You know, the Bend Pyramid is called the Bend Pyramid because it's got a bend in it. Was that a mistake? You know, it's two pyramids in one. It's got a top, uh, you know, angled pyramid, and then the, the bottom sides are a different angle. And you could actually say it's three pyramids in one because if you extend the top uh, pyramid of the Bent Pyramid uh, with these red lines I show here, you'd have the same size pyramid as the Red Pyramid, which is right next to the Bent Pyramid in Dashur. So you got three pyramids in one there. Is that a mistake? Uh, you actually have another one there we'll talk about in a second. So Keith Hamilton is a great researcher and he wrote this paper, The Bent Pyramid, The Curious Case of the 60 Degree Pyramid. And Keith does a relentless job of looking at all the Egyptologists who have studied this and what they've written about it. And the standard line is this, the Bent Pyramid is bent because it, it was a, a mistake, a problem. They wanted to build a 60 degree pyramid, but right away they realized the foundation wasn't strong enough, so they, did, they changed it to a 55 degree build. And then once they started building, one corner started to cave in, and so they had to change the top part to a 43 degree angle. And so Zahi Awas, Mark Lehner, and other uh, researchers have said that. Now I would simply say this, if you were up at the point where they decided to change the 43 degrees, how did they know that wouldn't be a problem? If, you, if you've got that many, let's say millions of pounds of stone built that high, how do you know that changing the intended angle of 55 down to 43 would make it safe? That's still a lot of stone. But give them the benefit of the doubt, that's the theory. Well, Steve Burroughs is one of the world's foremost structural engineers, and he kind of believed the party line, but when he actually went and studied this bent pyramid for himself, he says, wow. He says, uh, I'm happy to admit that my preconceptions were wrong. The structural analysis showed that the pyramid was designed like this, and it wasn't a failure. It was a great success. It got to us the way the Egyptians wanted it to get to us. It's not a mistake. Okay, so uh, here I am at the Bent Pyramid in one of my seven expeditions to Egypt. Uh, why the two angles then? What, what, what are they trying to tell us? Okay, glad you asked. So here is uh, uh, a drawing that shows the, the two different pyramids in red and blue there. And so uh, I, some characteristics of the, of the two pyramids combining to make the single Bent Pyramid. Let's look at them. So I superimposed them over a picture of Claire, one of the recent... Uh, Travelers that was me, with me, the researchers on the October adventure. So we got two different kind of people here, two, uh, two pyramids of different kinds here. The top one, let's use a red triangle to indicate that. Now, if you, this is obviously a 2D view. This is one of four faces of the top. So if you took four of those faces and, you know, just made, them be, made this be a cutout project for your kids, if you cut those four out and laid them together, like putting a jigsaw puzzle together, it would be one piece short of making a pentagon. So each one of these sides is a one-fifth of a pentagon. So the top part of the bent pyramid is yelling five. It's yelling pentagon. Well, if we take a blue cutout now for the, the bottom, and then if we took those four faces, cut them out, laid them on a table, said kids put these together, you'd be two pieces short of a hexagon. So the bottom part of the bent pyramid is a hexagon. So we have here this merger of five and six in, in the bent pyramid. Now this is an ancient symbolism. Uh, five and the, the five and six merger, the pentagon and heptagon, uh, hexagon, is called the merger of the macrocosm and the microcosm, and it's an esoteric symbol of basically the meaning of life. How do you combine heaven and earth, God and man, spirit and flesh? What's the connection? Something we should all be thinking about, like the ancient Egyptians were. You know, am I am I ready for heaven? So in this uh, diagram, which Robert Grant put on his Instagram page, I asked him about that little space there. I said, hey, this doesn't close. Your, your pentagon, heptagon, hexagon merger doesn't close into that circle. And so uh, 
we had a conversation about that, and after a, a tremendous amount of time, Robert figured it out, and he, through, through drawing, the, drawing the flower of life, he showed that that circle does circumscribe a joined pentagon, hexagon that share a common side. But it wasn't a simple process. He, at first, he said to me, it actually doesn't close. Hmm, I tried for over an hour. Now, this is one of the greatest, you know, sacred geometers around. This is a very talented uh, artist. So I, I said to him back, well, that, that sort of leads to my hunch. I somehow think that this, uh, this, this pentagon-hexagon merger is a key to the entrance into the Great Pyramid, which is offset. And I'd often thought that this symbol of the macrocosm and microcosm might solve that. It's interesting that this uh, little work that Robert and I did on trying to get this worked out was on May 6th or 5-6. We worked out the 5-6 on 5-6. Okay, so here, here's what it looks like. So here's a, a, a north view of the Great Pyramid. You can see where the original entrance there is, and the center line is, you can see, it's offset from the exact center of the pyramid. Okay, when you lay over the hexagon-pentagon merger so that the circle touches the two vertices, north and south, or excuse me, east and west of the Great Pyramid, you can see that the combined side of the hexagon and the pentagon goes through exactly where the original entrance is. And putting a different drawing over just to test myself. Uh, the first one was one from Adam Rutherford, a great pyramid researcher. This one's from David Davidson. I placed his drawing over, and sure enough, it lines up exactly. So the the, the place of the joined side of the five and the six, the, hep, the hexagon of the pentagon, goes right where the original entrance was. So what does this mean? Well, here's a picture of the north side of the Great Pyramid. So there's Elma Mound's entrance where all visitors enter by, and then there's the original entrance offset to the east. As you can see, it's actually offset by uh, 14 royal cubits, 286 uh, pyramid inches. So there's a, uh, an eastern view, so you can see the, the two different entrances from a different view there. Here I am up taking a picture of the uh, chevrons that are over the, over the original entrance. Uh, you'd get 30 days in jail if you climbed up there now, but I got permission to be up there this day. And uh, there's some of my friends got permission. We went up there after an expedition out into the desert, and there we are standing and waving from the original entrance. This is the other side, a rare view. Even people that get entrance into the Great Pyramid privately often don't go here. You know, I walked up the descending passage. This is also called the entrance passage, and that light you can see up there is the outside of the pyramid in that north door we just looked at. So now I'm peeking through the grate, you know, locked, th that gate that represents the Egyptian government has closed it. You can't go out there, you can't go in. Uh, side note, there are some hieroglyphics right there, a study for a future time. And uh, that arrow right there is pointing down to just below where we can see in this view. And this, these letters are there. This is the one set of writing that's in the entire pyramid. Sometimes it's said that there are no hieroglyphics in the Great Pyramid. These are the only ones. And interestingly, those spell my family name. That's a story for another day. So what does this mean? Okay, so you've got this original entrance, which we saw as defined by the merger of the, the five, six. And then you've got the intruder's forced hole, which is right in the center of the pyramid. Those are your two choices for entering. Okay, so the... Hexagon pentagon merger, the microcosm and the macrocosm says go through the offset door. Who do you think you are? Or you can just blast in and go through the original door or the, uh, the intruder's door and say, I've got it together, I'm good. I don't, I don't need to think about that macrocosm, microcosm stuff. Okay, so that's an intimation of the meaning. So, uh, why two angles? Because the 5-6 pentagon over the hexagon is microcosm and macrocosm. It's an intimation that we're, we've got some hints about the meaning of life, about how to be connected with the beyond, heaven and earth. Okay, so the first connection we've seen between the Bent Pyramid and Giza is this 5-6 microcosm-macrocosm connection. I want to look at one more. Okay, so why the choice of where to split the 5-6? You know, uh, that's where they chose to, but they could have split it up there. You'd still have the, the whole 5 and 6 thing. The top would still produce a pentagon. The bottom would still produce a hexagon. You'd still have the 5-6, the macrocosm, the microcosm, the whole thing. Why did they choose to split it at that point? 
A little side note here, so Alan Green has this picture. He shows that the intended height, if it would have been a 60 angle pyramid, it would have been 220.617 cubits high. That's what it was supposed to be, but oh, the mistake, it ended up being exactly 200 cubits. Hmm, another indication about what is really the true story here. Okay, so here's the split. The split puts 110.1 of the 200 cubits above in the top part the top part of the bent pyramid and the bottom is 89.9. Now why not choose even numbers like 90 and 110? You know, why have 110.1 and 89.9? Why don't you choose even numbers? Okay, that's probably a hint as to what they were trying to tell us. Why 899 and not 11 or why 899 and 1101 instead of 900 and you know uh, 110. So that's what the Ben Pyramid chose to do. Where do we see this in Giza? Okay, so here is a, uh, a plan I drew of the uh, three pyramids in Giza based on the numbers from John Legon. And so you can see here, uh, this is very interesting. If you do a, uh, so, so the question again, why the 899 and the 1101? Why not just 90 and 110? Well, uh, and it looks like I, I missed a little bit, but I was trying to circle the uh, root 3 there. So you got root 3, and you've got root 2. So if you take the proportions of the 1101 and the 899, uh, you know, you can see that, that they come out to root 3 and root 2, root 3 over root 2. Now, um, if you just to see where that division takes place, you can see that the, uh, the north part of Khufu, which is the pyramid on the left there, uh, you, to the south part of Khafre, which is the middle pyramid, that's where you get the 1101. And so from the south face of Khafre to the end of that 1,000 cubits square, you've got 899. So that's what it's based on. Okay, so the root 2 and the root 3. Now, what's the point there? Well, if you take a cube, the diagonal of the surface area of any one of the faces is root 2. And the diagonal of the cube itself in the, in the inner 3D space is root 3. So what they're doing both at the Bent Pyramid and in Giza, they're getting us to think about a cube. They're taking us from 2D to 3D geometry. And then you can put a sphere inside of that cube because, as we pointed out before, there was intended to, a sphere to be on top of the Great Pyramid. Um, we'll do a, you know, more on that. But uh, So here's this sphere, and inside the sphere is a tetrahedron, the most basic of the, of the you know, Platonic solids. And it height over edge, it's root 6 over 3. So what we found then, this incredible connection, the first one is the 5, 6 macrocosm, microcosm. What is the meaning of life? The pyramids are trying to tell us something about that. And then secondly, we saw that they point us from 2D to 3D, which I'd interpret as a call to stretch, to personal growth. The pyramids are trying to get us to be better human beings. What's the message? Stay tuned.